हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल अगेन एंड इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस शॉक वेव एनालिसिस पार्ट थ्री दिस इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माय अर्लियर टू वीडियोस वेयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड शॉक वेव अलोंग ए हाईवे एंड इन पार्ट टू शॉक वेव बिहाइंड ए ट्रैफिक सिग्नल you can watch these videos and link for these sessions is given in the description box in this part we will discuss a general theory of propagation of shock waves and before that let me say few sentences about the shock waves as i explained earlier also shock wave is similar to the wave produced by dropping a stone in water so when you drop a stone in the pool of water we create some disturbance and that disturbance is carried for forward through some waves same is the case with traffic flow also whenever we create a disturbance in the traffic flow a wave is generated and that waves travel either upward or downward depending upon the nature of disturbance so this is the by product of traffic congestion it is backup or queuing of vehicles as a result of a sudden decrease in roadway capacity and this decrease in roadway capacity may be due to lane closure maybe because of red light at a signal maybe because of accident or incident or maybe because of slow moving vehicle now in first part we have discussed the shock wave along a highway when traffic stream meets a slow moving vehicle and in the second part we have discussed shock wave behind a traffic signal now in this third part we will discuss general theory of propagation of shock waves there are three types of shock waves in general one backward propagating shock wave which you can see behind a traffic signal a forward propagating shock wave which you can observe beyond a traffic signal when traffic light turns green or it can be a stationary shock wave also a stationary shock wave occurs when two streams with same flow value but different densities or with different flows and same density meet each other now this is a diagram where on x axis i have taken time and on y axis we have taken distance and here is some reason with high density it can be because of any kind of bottleneck shock waves are generated because of this high density reason and the first shock wave is the frontal stationary shock wave which is always present at bottleneck location and it indicates the location where traffic demand exceeds capacity now this can occur recurrently on daily basis when during peak hour traffic demand is more than the capacity of the road or it can be non recurring non recurring type of shock wave also where because of some incident or accident the capacity has dropped for time being and this can happen on any section of the highway at any time of the day a frontal means it is at the front of the congested region the backward forming shock wave is always present if congestion occurs and it indicates the area in time space domain where excess demands are stored now here backward means moving opposite to traffic flow with the time and forming means over the time the congestion is extending farther downstream the forward recovery shock wave is present when demands are decreasing below the bottleneck and length of congestion is reducing here also forward means that over the time wave is moving forward means downstream and recovery means that over time free flow conditions are gradually occurring on sections farther downstream similarly real stationary shock wave are encountered 
when the arriving traffic demand is equal to the flow in the congested region for some period of time. The backward recovery shock wave is encountered when congestion has occurred, but then due to increased capacity of the bottleneck, the discharge rate exceeds the flow rate. And this forward forming shock wave is very rare to occur and therefore it is not considered very important. Let us now discuss how the shock waves propagate. Now we assume the green shield traffic flow model and which we have discussed several times in our earlier discussions that the speed at any density ki is given by this equation where uf is the free flow speed and kj is the jam density. Now if you assume that this ki upon kj is xi then this equation can be rewritten as ui is equal to uf into 1 minus x. x is the ratio of density i with jam density. Let us consider two points on flow density curve now. Point number one here and point number two here. And let us assume that this represents K1 and this represents K2 density. So the point one will be X1 and point two will be X2. Gem density is same. So K1 upon Kj will be X1 and K2 upon Kj will be X2 then speed of flow in these two regions will be u1 is equal to free flow speed into 1 minus x1 and u2 will be uf into 1 minus x2. And I, I explained in one of the earlier sessions on stroke wave that speed of the stroke wave 1, 2 will be given by q2 minus q1 upon k2 minus k1. So if you put these values here, and simplify this equation, then it will be that speed of shock wave is equal to uf into 1 minus x1 plus x2. Now, let us take one case where two streams of equal densities meet. That means x1 is equal to x2. Then the speed of shock wave would be uf into 1 minus x1 plus x2 and because x1 and x2 are same it will be 2x1. Now this shock wave is called the wave of discontinuity because densities are same and case 2 is when a traffic flow stream stops. It might be because of some incident on the highway or it might be behind the traffic signal. So in that case x1 will be corresponding to density at upstream and x2 will be density corresponding to jam density. So this velocity of stroke wave will be free flow speed 1 minus x1 plus 1 because x2 is now 1. K2 is jam density and it can be minus uf into x1. Now uf into x1 free flow speed into density at point 1 that is upstream. So this is negative that means it is moving backward upstream. If the stream of cars stop at traffic signal at t is equal to 0 at time t the length of platoon of stop car will be this uf into x1 into t where t can be the red time or if it is behind an incident then t can be the time for which incident remains or before it is site is cleared and number of cars in the queue will be this length multiplied by the gem density. So that is how you can calculate what will be the length of the queue behind a signal and how many cars will be there in the queue. The case 3 is when shock wave is caused by starting of the platoon that is after incident is cleared or 
when the traffic light turns green. So X1 here will be now jam density that is upstream and X2 will be let us say X2. So the speed of shock wave will be free flow speed into 1 minus 1 plus X2 or minus UF into X2. Again it is negative that means it is moving backward upstream. Now in this equation what is X2? What is X2? If the speed of platoon is U2 then U2 can be governed by this equation that is a green shield equation and therefore X2 would be 1 minus U2 upon UF. So if you substitute this value of X2 here you get the speed of shock wave is minus uf into 1 minus u2 upon uf and if you simplify this it will be minus uf into u2. Now u2 is the speed after traffic signal turns green or after incident is removed. So the traffic will be moving at the section capacity and therefore at capacity this u2 will be half of the free flow speed and therefore the speed of shock wave will be half of the free flow speed and negative sign here indicates that it is moving upward. Now let us take one example that traffic flow on a section of two lane highway follows green shield model with free flow speed of 60 km per hour and jam density of 200 km jam density of 200 vehicles per kilometer and therefore you can write this equation u is equal to 60 into 1 minus k upon 200. A traffic incident on this highway stops all traffic for 5 minutes. When the space mean speed is 40 km per hour and density 32 vehicles per kilometer. Now estimate the shock wave speed and length of the stop line of cars. The solution will be like this. For state 1, shock wave caused by stopping of vehicles, x2 will be 1. And therefore, the speed of shock wave will be minus uf into x1. Now, x1 says that the, the point was when the density was 32 vehicles per kilometer and speed 45 kilometer per hour. And therefore, x1 is k1 upon kj or 32 divided by 200 that is 0 0.16. And free flow speed is given in this equation 60 kilometer per hour and therefore USW is minus 9.6 kilometer per hour. Now that is the speed of shock wave. Second part of this question is length of stop line of cars. So for t is equal to 5 minute that is 1 by 12 hours Q length will be speed of shock wave multiplied by the time that is 0 0.8 kilometer. And if jam density is 200 vehicles per kilometer, the number of cars in the queue will be 0 0.8 into 200 that is 160 cars. So that's the second part of the first question. Now second part is when incident is removed. When incident is removed, then speed of shock wave is minus uf minus u2. And this will be minus 30 km per hour. Because free flow speed is 60. You see here, the free flow speed is 60 km per hour and the vehicle assume moving at 30 km per hour. And therefore, UF is 60 and U2 is 30. So, USW will be minus 30 km per hour moving upstream. Now, important point here is that both the waves before incident and after, inc after incident is clear. Are they, are, they are moving upward. A stopping wave and clearing wave both are moving upward. Now clearing wave should overtake starting wave 
and the relative speed between the two is minus 30 minus minus 9.6 that is minus 20.4 km per hour. So that is the recovery rate. Therefore, time to dissipate this Q length would be 0.8 divided by 20.4 km per hour that is 0 0.392 hours. And this point on the roadway will be 1.15 km upstream from the point of incident. And that is what we call Q reach. So it is not that when the incident is removed, the whatever number of cars are parked behind the incident, they will all only be affected. There will be many cars which will be joining the platoon and then that what we call the Q reach. So friends, in this session we have learned basic concept of shock waves in traffic flow, what is the classification of shock wave and general theory of propagation of shock waves. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, please do write in the comment box and subscribe to the channel.